So this morning, while most of you were still in bed, drunk from eggnog, or getting your morning latte, some of you don't have heat because you're dependent on the grid. So I guess you had to stay cold. Me, this morning, I was out chopping wood. You know, preparing for next winter. I already have wood for this winter. But chopping wood. That's what I was doing this morning. Um, it chops real easy when, when it's frozen. I mean, I can bust up a 24-inch in diameter log with a maul in less than five minutes. <clears throat> the day before, there was, as I remember correctly, close to a half a million people in my state without power. It wouldn't have mattered to me. My house is heated by wood. You, the people, people in general in Western civilization are totally dependent on the system. And when I mean the system, it's not just the grid. The political system and the religious system. so dependent upon the religious system that grown men, knowing that Christmas, celebrating Christmas is wrong, will keep doing it anyway because they know that if they don't, they won't get laid. I was trying to Think of a way to say it nicely, like no woman will have them. But let's just be honest about this. They do this for women. Men, you do it for women, knowing it's not right. Knowing it, it teaches selfishness. Knowing that these traditions like... Um, Santa Claus coming down a chimney is fraudulent and fake and it's lying to your children. You know this, but you pass on the lie from your generation to the next generation. Why? Well, one is because that's what your mommy and daddy did and the other one is because if you don't, you're not going to get any. You're not going to get laid. Because women, my goodness, show me a non-Jewish woman or a non-Muslim woman who does not celebrate Christmas. Good luck. You see what I mean? So, yet, this world, Western civilization, specifically not exclusively, <clears throat> is under the gun, staring down the barrel of hundreds of ICBM launchers. And there's a reason for this. Let's get started here. The reason I will go into right here, Revelation 9. 
and verse 20. And this right here, it, it appears to me, is talking about a nuclear war. Because the description of the Yars mobile ICBM launchers is uncanny. And then it says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the work of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither they can they see, nor can they walk, neither did they repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries. The pharmaceutical and healthcare system today have exposed themselves as sorcerers for everybody to see, nor of their fornication. Let's look at this and see what it means. I, Dollar Tree. Now, <coughs> Usage, fornication, whoredom, essentially idolatry, okay? Because they go hand in hand. Nor of their thefts. All right, and this was after the great, what appears to be multiple ICBM launches and they still would not repent of their celebrating Christmas, worshiping idols, the graven image in every house of worship in Western civilization, where they go to bow down to it on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, or even on Wednesdays. And so I wanted to do a video on Christmas today, but I realized that I had done one last year that was so that was done so well and so in depth. I'm just going to defer you to that particular video. I'll put it down in the link uh, below in the link below, but it's this one, this video, the truth about December the 25th. It's and its idolatrous origin. Okay? And it's a long one. It's about an hour. How long is it? 50? Yeah, it's, a, it's about just about an hour long. A very, very good one. And you know how many views I got on YouTube on that video? It's embarrassing. Eleven. Eleven views. All the work that I put into this video. And I got eleven views. So it brings to my attention, uh, it just reminds me of my so-called friends. And I, I'm calling all of my friends out today. You're all fake friends. Steve, Brian, Bill, George, James. You're all fake friends. A couple of days ago, one of my friends called me up and he was just over and over and over gushing and marveling about, he just can't believe how much information that I had keep in my store in my head concerning health. What kind of herbs and whatever is good for what? I, and if I don't know it, I can find it in 45 minutes. As he, as he put it. And so, but I told him, I said, well, 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 hold on there, Bill. Now, 
but I have some more information too that's much more important. And I just push right on back to the the Lutheran doctrine because his family is Lutheran. And I start to explain to him and I started reading out of Wikipedia what Martin Luther said about the explicit name of the Creator. And he didn't want to hear any of it. He says that he starts making excuses, trying to find, and then, you know, because he talks too much on the phone to me about things, and then when I, all I, all I got to do is talk to him about the truth, and he'll hang up the phone. He's ready to, uh, to hang up the phone. He's done. So, you guys, you're not my friends. I've been your friend, but you have not been mine. The only friend that I have, to be honest with you, really, truly friend, is a cousin. Is a cousin. Because, as far as I know, he is the only one that I know personally who believes the same things that I do. All right. What, what am I doing? What, what, why am I talking about this? Well, because for so many years I've been telling everybody I could that will listen. I've been putting these videos on YouTube. Now, what I'm going to tell you today is because you did not research the scripture yourself. You had the same tools that I did. It's not that I am somehow gifted to be able to find these things and others cannot. That's not true. Nope. That's not it. You have access, the same access to the same information that I do. There is no excuse. I'm not this bright, quick-thinking, above-average, genius, intellectual that you have to go to to find these things. Nope, that's not me. In fact, it's the other way around. The fact that I have found these things and am posting these, this information on YouTube and on BitChute, that somebody like myself is doing this, when all these other seminary taught preachers have been telling you lies, proves that there are no excuses. So, it's coming, folks, the Great Tribulation upon the Gentiles. Now, according to War News 24-7, the whole list, Patriots, HIMARS, and weapons worth $1.85 billion the USA gives to Ukraine and uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, Congress um, votes to just give even more military equipment to Ukraine to fight against Russia. There's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. Let me see if I can remember it correctly. Now, so I read that. The whole reason to pull the troops out of Afghanistan in such a disorganized, disorderly manner was to help Ukraine fight a war with Russia. That was the reason. And that was before, as I remember correctly, that was before February when, um, when the invasion began. They knew it was coming. So they left Apache helicopters and all kinds of equipment to the Taliban in a hurry. 
but they did not want to actually fight a direct war with Russia. They wanted Ukraine to do it for them. All right. Now we see this one. On the 22nd, all of Moscow's available air defense systems are in firing positions. Russian media says Russia-NATO conflict is imminent. NATO forces will be hit. It's coming. It's coming. It's like the warning announcements were made during Hanukkah. I find that interesting. The Russians report that NATO ground forces will enter Ukraine. I have seen other articles that make this claim too. For the first time since the start of the war in Ukraine, Russia has deployed anti-aircraft systems around the country's capital, Moscow. What reason could they be doing that? Would you care to venture a guess? Russian media reports that a conflict with NATO is a matter of weeks. According to the Russians, NATO ground forces are preparing to enter western Ukraine to save the Ukrainian army from total destruction. This move, according to Moscow, will not prevent the entry of the Russian army into western Ukraine. When this happens, NATO and Russian forces will face each other. In this context, passengers of a commuter train Heading towards Moscow are left speechless when they realize this sudden deployment of anti-aircraft systems near Moscow. Passengers were able to record cell phone videos showing several anti-aircraft systems deployed in the uh, Vereya region, 95 kilometers south of the country's capital. That'd be about, what, 44 or 45 miles? Southwest of Moscow. The information speaks of several Panzer S-1 and other S-300 and S-400 systems. The entire anti-aircraft umbrella of the capital of Russia is on alert. We remind you that Russian authorities are equipping shelters in apartment buildings and shopping centers in the Moscow region. This was stated by the head of the Regional Administration of the Ministry of Emergencies, Sergei Politikin at the plenary session of the Duma of the Moscow region. All right. So this particular um, statement, direct confrontation between Russia and NATO, is a matter of weeks. NATO fears that Russia will launch a general offensive that will destroy the Ukrainian army not only in the Donbass, but also in the territories that remain under control of Kiev. The NATO leadership does not even doubt that the Russian units located near the Belarus-Ukraine border will strike these territories in the first place. NATO has always been very clear. Ukraine will not lose. So the only solution for Washington is to deploy troops in Ukraine in hopes that this will stop the Russian offensive. They hope that Vladimir Putin will not want to confront NATO directly given the potential nuclear consequences and will therefore back down. Game of chicken. But those of us who have been reading scripture, those of us who have read Revelation 9 verses 17 and 18, those of us who have read 
Zechariah 14, verses 12, 13, and 14. Those of us who have read Romans 11, verse 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29. Those of us who have read Luke 21, verses, if I can remember correctly, 24, 25, something like that. So many of them, so many scriptures that point to this event. Daniel 12 and verse 1. Read using the Strong's Concordance, I might add, because if you read it using King James Version, you'll never get it. It is coming. If you bother to read Jeremiah 10 or Jeremiah 10 from top to bottom, you'll realize that the day of visitation upon the Gentiles is coming and it will not end well for them. Those who bow down and worship trees, throw their silver and their gold on the trees, put presents under the trees, build graven images to bow down and worship. In Jeremiah 10, he makes a distinction between Israel and the Gentiles. So, analysts have two theories on the matter of the Russia-NATO war. NATO's entry into the war would immediately force Moscow to capitulate in fear. Western countries will then gain access to the resources of a weakened Russia, and President Putin will disappear from the international scene. The alliance fears Russia's imminent general attack on Ukraine and thus tries to prevent it. This is a very deadly scenario, and the NATO command knows it, the Russians conclude. Now, you got to remember, and it really does and Vladimir Putin, it really doesn't matter. It, it, it's not even about him. But, having said that, the man has got one foot in the grave. And do you think that th this man with his delusions of grandeur being like, uh, what was it, what did he say, Frederick the Great? Uh, he likened himself to, I, I, was that what it, what it was? He's going to go down swinging. Two... Uh, two. Was it Frederick the Great? Uh, I believe that's the one. He found himself beset on all sides by a multiplying host of enemies bent on the total destruction of the Prussian state. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of the wrong person. But anyway, now we see this one. Putin ready to negotiate and to Russian war, uh, Ukraine war, but West wants to tear apart Russia. Is it true? I mean, I don't know. Is it true? Is it true that the West wants to bust up Russia and exploit their resources? Is, is, is that what's going on? On Sunday interview with Russia One State Television, Russian President Vladimir Putin said his country is now ready to negotiate an end to the conflict in Ukraine. However, 
He once again pointed the finger at the West for making any dialogue toward an acceptable end to the fighting all but impossible. We are ready to negotiate with everyone involved about acceptable solutions, but that is up to them. We are not the ones refusing to negotiate. They are. Now, I am no fan of Vladimir Putin. Let's get that straight. But in this case, he's right. The West does not want to negotiate with him. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it makes no difference to me. It's just a fact. But it's also a fact that's going to get the West in trouble. It is going to be the end of the West. Because I know how people like Vladimir Putin thinks. If the West tries to take Russia down, Russia is going to take the West down with him. There is no weapon that man has ever formed that he has not used. Including the nuclear weapon. Now, of course, the nuclear weapons that were used were two of them, and they were atomic bombs. They weren't hydrogen bombs or these more sophisticated, a hundred times the strength of the first nuclear bombs. They will be used as well. <clears throat> However, President Zelensky on Wednesday in his speech before Congress pledged absolute victory and has of late been vehement in rejecting any talk of letting go of territory as a non-starter, especially as the months-long Ukrainian counteroffensive has met with some significant successes. Also in the interview, Putin continued his theme of the U.S. and NATO waging a proxy war using Ukraine as a pawn. He said... In the Sunday comments that West is attempting to tear apart Russia. At the core of it all is the policy of geopolitical opponents aiming to tear apart Russia, the historical Russia, Putin said. They have always tried to divide and conquer. Our goal is something else, to unite the Russian people. And as I have said in previous videos, this is really all about the continuation of the battle between the Crusaders in the West and the Byzantines in the East. Nothing has changed except for the size of their weapons. And once they get the weapons that they can annihilate each other with, they will do it. And then you will see that their religion is Satan's religion then you will see their religion is idolatry worthless and they will be go from greatness into nothing in a matter of mere moments On Friday, the U.S. State Department said Putin is belatedly, as if it's too late, acknowledging reality. Given the day prior, he, for the first time, said he never used, uh, I mean, uh, given the day prior, for the first time, he ever used the word war to describe Russian actions in Ukraine. Putin said in the uh, Thursday televised news conference, our goal is not to spin this flywheel of a military conflict, but on the contrary, to end this war adding that this is what we are striving for. All right. And I pointed this out before. They, they have this 10-point peace plan. And let's basically give all the land back to that belonged to grain, uh, Ukraine back to Ukraine and probably uh, even... Um, I haven't seen the, t the 10 steps, but it's just... Now, you see a pattern of what's going on here. So, as I said before, United States had, these, had this election debacle, which was deliberate. 
and then they pulled out of Afghanistan in a in a extremely haphazard fashion to fight this war with Russia via Ukraine. And what do we see here? We see a pattern to cancel the elections in, Ger in Turkey, the elections that are coming in March, the extension of territorial waters to 12 miles south and west of Crete is announced. Rapid developments are coming in Greek and Turkish relations. Turkey now threatens war. There's no need for me to read that to you. Now, to those of you who will continue to keep Christmas so that your woman won't leave you, Oh, your woman will, uh, what is it, 50% uh, of Western civilization, especially the United States, uh, marriages end in divorce anyway. And then what does she do? She has a, she has your children and then she goes and runs off with another man and you've got to pay child support. So you're essentially paying the new man to bang your wife. What you're doing. But you won't change, you won't repent of those evil ways, the Christmas, the Easter, and all of that, even though you're, you're the, the, the fact that you guys are constantly chasing tail brings you nothing but heartbreak and misery. which is why I quit chasing tail a long time ago. It's just, it's all it does to bring you heartache and misery, but yet you will still commit idolatry and fornication with graven images so that you can get a woman. And that's the reason. Right here in Revelation 21, verse 7, he that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. That's Jehovah Elohim speaking. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, the detestable, the murderer, the, harm, uh, the fornicator. All right, let's look up the word again. Make sure we know which word they're using. A man who prostitutes himself. Today we call them trannies. All right. And sorcerers, pharmacaeus. Take a look around you and you see the deception of the pharmaceutical industries of Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson and Johnson. I can't remember half of the other ones, but you know what I'm talking about. Idolaters, that means you who celebrate Christmas, who bow down and worship at the tree as described in Jeremiah 10, and who also worship that graven image every Sunday morning. The graven image of Jesus. You see, because Yehoshua never changed his name, you Christians just went back to the idols that your forefathers used to worship. But when I try to explain that to you, especially those who call themselves my friends, You close your ears, you don't want to hear it. Try to change the subject, said, I gotta go, Henry. And all liars. Once again, that includes trannies who claim that they're a girl when they're a boy or claim that they're a woman when they're a man. That's a liar. 
or like presidents of the United States. Shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Well, I'm going to go ahead and destroy another narrative. You Christians claim that the church is the bride of something or other is what you say. And there came one of the seven messengers, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me, saying, Come here and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife the Lamb's woman. He carried me away into the Spirit in a gray high mountain and showed me the great city, the sacred Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the Kodesh Jerusalem, descending from the sky from Elohim, having the glory of Jehovah, and the light was like unto a stone most precious, like jasper stone, clear as crystal. All right? So, the church is not anyone's bride. Inside the walls, you can see that the doors, the gates, and it was all great and high and had twelve gates, and had the gates had twelve messengers, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of the church. Nope. The children of Israel. Now, once again, I pointed this out. The rest of the men who were not killed by these plagues still refused to repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. Like Deus, the Latins, that is their name for their, their idol, their god, whatever you want to call it, that's Satan. Deus is Satan. So is God. The English version, the English and the Germanic tribes is also the devil. God is the devil. I pointed out to my friend, I even sent him a link of Martin Luther's infamous book, The Shem Hach Meforesh, where he blasphemes the holy name that the Jews worship, where he claims they get it from inside of a sow. And you think you Christians are not going to pay the price for this blasphemy? I mean, like I said before, you got half of the people in the United States are Protestants. And Martin Luther is the founder of Protestantism. <clears throat> but Martin Luther was also a Catholic priest. Where did he learn this stuff from? The Catholic Church. And that is your other half of Western Christianity. And no... The Byzantines, the Greek Orthodox, they are not going to escape either because they committed the same kind of sins and they still do to this day. They should not worship devils, idols of gold, of silver, of brass and stone, of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither have they repented of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornications of their thefts. And this right here comes out of Jeremiah 10. And that is the reason why I want you to listen to this particular video of mine. 
listen to it carefully. Where did I what did I do with it? This one. Okay? It's the truth about the December twenty fifth. For so did the truth about December 25th and its idolatrous origin, I'm going to stick the link down below. I was going to do another video about this Christmas thing, but I listened to this this morning. I cannot, if I were to try to do another one, this one would be better than the one that I would do today. That's why I'm going to defer you to this one. It's very important. Please listen to it from beginning to end. And I know the vast majority of the people are not going to. Well, that's on you. That's not on me. I have done what I needed to do in getting the word out. And I told this friend of mine, I warned him. I told him the very same thing that I say on these videos. Judgment Day is going to come. Friends and family are going to know that I knew about all this, that I knew what was going to happen in advance. And then they're going to point the finger of accusation at me. Why didn't you tell me? You did not tell me. You knew and you didn't. Oh, no, 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 no. Nope. I'm not going to let y'all get away with that. Not going to do it. Because I have posted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube and on BitChute warning about these very things that I'm talking about today. You've had your warning. I tried to tell you, but you won't listen. And don't point the finger at me on Judgment Day. Point the finger at yourself.